Hello Mila, hello Jack. Hello everybody else who's watching and welcome to Storytime with Grandad. Today's book is called Spookball Champions. Oliver's mum and dad were away for the weekend so he was staying with Auntie Mona and Uncle Fred. They lived in a big old house on top of a hill. Oliver was sure it was haunted. Auntie Mona and Uncle Fred were very dull. They had no children, no neighbours, no cats and no dogs. Auntie Mona moaned a lot. All I do is go to the supermarket. The food in this house just vanishes. Uncle Fred was very thin, so he didn't eat all the food. He just fretted a lot. This door squeaks. Is that a drip I can hear? Was that a floorboard creaking? Oliver knew what was causing their problems. I think you've got a ghost. It's the ghost who makes the creaking noises as it wanders around the house. It visits the kitchen and eats all the food. Auntie Mona and Uncle Fred thought Oliver was being silly. Oliver, don't be ridiculous. A ghost, what a daft idea. After dinner, Oliver was allowed to watch a programme on TV with the sound turned down. The programme was about some people who lived in a big house by the sea. They turned it into a bed and breakfast. That gave Oliver an idea. Auntie, you could turn your house into a B&B. &B. A haunted one. As you've got a ghost. Stop going on about ghosts, Oliver. It's time for bed. We always go to bed early because we don't sleep well. Your uncle kicks me in his sleep. Your auntie pokes me in her sleep. Oliver couldn't get to sleep. He waited for the ghost, but it didn't appear. He jumped out of bed. The ghost isn't coming to me. I'm going to find the ghost, he said. He opened his weekend bag. He was going to go on a ghost hunt. Oliver had brought along some books and his Game Boy and the ghost suit he had worn at Halloween. He pulled it on. He crept out of his room and along the landing. He went downstairs. He went across the hall, then down some more stairs. He stopped at a door. I think this is the kitchen. He got ready to scare the ghost. He pulled open the door. Crash, bang, clatter. It wasn't the kitchen. It was a very untidy cupboard. Oliver pushed all the stuff back. He opened the next door. This was the kitchen and there was the ghost. A fat ghost munching her way through a packet of biscuits. Stop eating my auntie's food, he said. Get back to your attic, squeaker, said the ghost. The ghost threw a biscuit at Oliver. Oliver ducked and ran back upstairs. I must tell Auntie and Uncle, he thought. He burst into Auntie and Uncle's bedroom and got another surprise. No wonder they didn't sleep well. There was a thin ghost lying between them. Get back to your attic, squeaker, said the ghost. At that moment, Auntie Mona woke up. The thin ghost disappeared. Shriek! Wake up, Fred! Oliver pulled his ghost hat off. It's only me, Auntie, he said. Auntie and Uncle were crosser than they had been before. Why are you wandering around the house in the middle of the night? There was a ghost in here, honest Auntie, and there was one in the kitchen. Stop going on about ghosts, Oliver. Take that silly costume off and go back to bed, she said. Next day, Auntie Mona went to the supermarket as usual. Uncle Fred fretted about the squeaking doors and spent all day oiling the hinges. Oliver just waited for bedtime. He wanted to go on another ghost hunt. Both the fat ghost and the thin ghost called me Squeaker and told me to go back to my attic, he thought. I think they mistook me for another ghost. That night... 
Oliver waited until the house was quiet. Then he got up. He pulled on his ghost suit again. He went upstairs this time. He climbed right to the top of the house. The last stairs were very narrow and led to the attic. Slowly he opened the attic door. Sure enough, there was a ghost. Ooh, ooh, who are you? asked the ghost. I'm Oliver. You must be Squeaker, he said. I'm Septimus Squeaker. For a moment I thought you were Horatio Howell or Serena Scream, said the ghost. Are they the ghosts downstairs? said Oliver. Yes, said the ghost. Septimus told Oliver why he didn't like them. This house was my haunt. Horatio Howell came and challenged me to a game of spook ball. Whoever wins a game of spook ball keeps the haunt. I'm good at spook ball, but Horatio cheated. Serena played on his side. That's against the rules, said the ghost. So you lost, said Oliver. I was allowed to keep the attic, said Squeaker. Oliver felt sorry for Septimus. I'm going to give that pair a piece of my mind, said Oliver. He didn't reach the other ghosts, though. He met Auntie Mona on the landing. Bed, Oliver, I won't tell you again, and take that silly costume off, she said. Oliver had just got back into bed when he saw something move near the door. It was Septimus. What are you doing here? he asked. I need your help, said Septimus. What happened? asked Oliver. Another ghost has arrived. He's challenged me to a game of spook ball. Can't you play? asked Oliver. I've lost my spook stick, said Septimus. What does a spook stick look like? Come with me, said Septimus. Septimus took Oliver back to the top of the house. Quietly they opened the attic door. Caesar was tossing his spook stick from hand to hand. Where are you, Septimus? I'm waiting, he said. Just then Oliver remembered he had seen something like that before. He ran back downstairs. He pulled open the cupboard next to the kitchen. All the stuff fell out again. These are spook sticks, he said. They were difficult to catch and hold because they were a bit like ghosts. Oh, uh, gotcha, he said, catching the sticks. Before Oliver went back to the attic, he popped his head round the kitchen door. Caesar Snarl is here, he said. Shriek, not Caesar Snarl, said the ghost. He peeped into Auntie and Uncle's bedroom. Psst, Caesar Snarl is here. Shriek, oh no, said the ghost. He reached the attic again. Here, I've found your spook sticks. Uh, thanks, said Septimus. Septimus didn't look keen. This is your attic and your house, Septimus. Go and knock the spots off that bully. Septimus took a spook stick and crept into the attic. The game of spook ball was about to begin. All at once, a spook ball flew across the attic. Caesar gave it a whack with his spook stick. The ball zoomed down the attic and disappeared through the wall behind Septimus. One goal to me, said Caesar. Caesar scored two more goals. Show him, Septimus, said Oliver. Another ball appeared. Septimus was quicker this time. He hit it through the wall behind Caesar's snarl. Just then, something made Oliver turn around. Horatio and Serena were coming up the stairs. They were holding spook sticks. If you've come to help Septimus, you can't. You know it's against the rules. Oh no, we're not going to help Septimus. We're going to help Caesar, said the ghosts. Horatio and Serena drifted past Oliver and up into the attic. We'll help him win, then he'll let us stay. If these two can help Caesar... Then I can help Septimus, thought Oliver. Oliver ran to his bedroom and pulled on his ghost suit. He went back upstairs and found the spare spook stick. Septimus, I've come to help, he said. You can be my goalie. Try to stop Serena and Horatio from scoring, said Septimus. The game ends at midnight, he said. 
the spook balls were very fast. Oliver soon got the hang of it. It's a bit like tennis hockey, he, he said. The house shook for a whole hour. Windows rattled, doors slammed, curtains billowed, lights flickered on and off. Then the spook balls stopped coming. Sleepy Horatio had collapsed into a chair. Serena was slumped in a corner. She'd eaten too many biscuits. Just as Septimus whacked a ball past Caesar, the clock down in the hall struck midnight. Caesar, Horatio and Serena were horrified. It's midnight already. The game's over. We've lost, they said. We won by one goal, said Septimus. A moment later, Caesar, Horatio and Serena vanished. Oliver saw them through a window, drof drifting off down the hill. The house belonged to Septimus once more. Next morning, Oliver got a surprise. Auntie and Uncle were smiling. We had a really wonderful night's sleep last night. The best in years. But didn't you hear anything, said Oliver. Not a thing, said his auntie, and I've been thinking about that b and B idea of yours. Look, Uncle got up early and made a sign. What do you think? The old haunted house b and B. But we know the house isn't really haunted, said his auntie. Of course, Oliver knew better than that. I think you'll always sleep well now, and I don't think your food will vanish. But you might hear... A creaking floorboard, now and then, he said. Oliver's mum and dad came to pick him up. Oliver promised to visit again soon. He was looking forward to another game of spook ball in the attic. The end. Goodbye, Mila. Goodbye, Jack. I'll see you soon. Goodbye, everybody.